Hi, I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to the last of our video tutorials for the fibre module. And in this tutorial, I'm going to tell you a little bit about enzymes. Enzymes are becoming increasingly used in the paper industry. Now, the first thing to make clear is enzymes are not living organisms. They're not like bacteria, they're not like viruses, they're not a living organism. An enzyme is simply an organic molecule, you almost exclusively a protein, that has a special shape. And it's the shape part of it that's important. And I'll show you this in a moment or two. So enzymes are what we call biological catalysts. Now the normal definition of an ordinary catalyst, an inorganic catalyst, is something that speeds up or slows down a chemical reaction without taking part in the reaction itself. Biological catalysts are no different. Um, they encourage, they speed up or encourage reactions to happen, um, speed them up. I don't think they slow them down, but they don't actually get used up. They don't really take part in the reaction itself. They just make the reaction able to happen. And hopefully this video will make it clear how it does it. So the most important thing, as I said, about an enzyme is its shape. It has to be exactly the right shape. And if it is the right shape, it will do the job. If it isn't the right shape, it won't do the job. And the one thing, to, the other thing to remember about enzymes is each enzyme only ever does one thing. Enzymes are designed to do one thing and one thing only. They don't multitask. Now, because the shape is so important, it's important to know what could change its shape. So temperature can change its shape. If you heat up an enzyme system, then the enzyme will change its shape and it won't do its job. If you change the pH of an enzyme, same thing. Because enzymes, protein shapes are all about bonding in within the molecule itself changing the ph changes the ionic nature of the carboxyl groups and hydrogen bonding and so it'll change shape and it won't do the job as an example of that i've got here a little apple that i took from my garden earlier today cut it in half now you may notice that one half is brown and we all know if you cut an apple in half and leave it it goes brown. But why does it go brown? It goes brown because there's an enzyme in the apple. And as soon as you cut the apple surface, apples are quite intelligent, would you believe? When you cut the apple surface, the apple knows it's been damaged because it's now got oxygen in contact with it. So that sets up a process where an enzyme is generated. The enzyme will cause a reaction between a chemical that's in the apple plus the oxygen in the air. And it will produce this material, this compound that's brown in colour. And that compound there is actually there to protect the apple against biological invasion, something like you know, fungal spores and things like that. It's almost like an antiseptic. What I did with this apple after I cut it, I immediately put lemon juice on this half. And as you can see, it's not gone brown. It hasn't gone brown because by changing the pH, I altered the shape of the enzyme and therefore it cannot do that reaction. So I hope that makes sense to you. Let's move on. The other thing that can sometimes change uh, the shape of an enzyme is the ionic environment. So enzymes work in an environment where there's a specific uh, ionic concentration. If you change the ionic concentration, because enzymes are held together, the shapes are held in place by charges, you will change those charges and therefore you'll change the shape and it won't work. An example might be putting, putting salt in the system. 
if you put a lot of salt in that will make it ionically a lot more concentrated that can change the shape of an enzyme and then it won't work so this is what enzymes do this bottom thing here is an enzyme and if you look it's this specific shape it will only take in two molecules a molecule that has a bit that is exactly that shape and another molecule that has a bit that's exactly that shape and when they come along and fit in those positions the orientation of these two molecules are such that groups that are on each one will become so close it'll cause an interaction between them they will then form a new compound it will probably change the shape of the molecule and then the enzyme will release it so this is an example of an, en an enzyme being used to synthesize a new chemical this might be an example with the apple so one of these is oxygen one of those is the material that's already in the apple it combines the two and you've now got this antiseptic material but enzymes also work the other way around they can use to decompose material so here we have so you, you, for those that are very quick will have noticed all I did really was to flip these two arrows around to give us a, a new system um, so you have a material here that's got this one particular shape it will fit exactly into an enzyme that will cause some disruption of bonds here and it will split up and you've now got two different compounds so enzymes can be used to synthesize material by bringing things together or it could be used to cleave bonds and split things up so that's how enzymes work and these days they're used in quite a few different applications they're used in a bleaching application um, to get rid of lignin that's already there because it's the lignin that causes the color uh, they use sometimes with starch to cut starch into smaller molecules they're even being used to improve the strength of fibers rather than having high energy refining to externally fibrillate the fibers you slurry the fiber around with some enzyme at room temperature and those fibrils within the fiber the enzymes will get in there and separate them a little bit and then you just need to tickle it through a refiner massive reduction of energy use and a big increase in strength And just a uh, final uh, slide just to mention on naming all enzymes there's a there's a special um, EC name which is a, a set of four numbers EC stands for the enzyme commission so the enzyme commission have come up with a way of naming enzymes by numbers the first number is the type of reaction that the enzyme undergoes the second number the dot then the second number is a subcategory of that reaction then a dot the third number is a subcategory of the subcategory and then a dot and the fourth number is just an index number so the very first reaction of that type was had a one the next reaction had a two etc so the way that we generally name enzymes they used to just give enzymes fancy names but the way they name them now is they look at the material that the enzyme acts on and then they add A's on the end. So you see here, an enzyme that acts on cellulose is a cellulase. Fructose is a type of sugar. An enzyme that acts on fructose is a fructase. Amylose is a type of starch. So an, an enzyme that acts on amylose is amylase. I mentioned that enzymes react on lignin so therefore they, they are lignase lactose you find in milk so an enzyme that acts on lactose is a lactase and if you've got an enzyme that will act on protein like tenderizing meat then that's a protease so that's how they're named uh, in the level two exam you can sometimes be asked to name two or three enzymes and the substrate on which they act so that's an easy way of, of remembering those. 
Okay, well, that's enough for this particular video for the last in the series. I hope you've enjoyed all my uh, fibre series. I'll be starting next on water and chemical additives. So I look forward to seeing you in the future. Bye for now.